In today's video, I'll be comparing the latest NVIDIA Vulcan driver 532.34 against my favorite single player offline driver by NVIDIA 534.40. So guys, um, I think it was on Friday or Saturday, I released the Vulcan driver video 532.32. I believe that this driver came out a couple of hours later, so it was a request from the same guy saying, please do an updated video on that Vulcan driver. So by no means do I recommend this driver. I'm doing this, this video as a comparison. And who knows, maybe I do recommend it by the end. But before we get started, please head on over to my homepage on YouTube. If you are subscribed, just make sure that you have that little notification icon selected so that when I do drop a new video, you are notified instantaneously. It really will help me with the algorithm. I wanna make a living out of YouTube, so I need your help, guys. And then um, for those of you that aren't subscribed, if by the end of this video you find this helpful and you enjoy these type of videos, please consider subscribing and then actually selecting that notification icon so that you are notified instantaneously. So guys, in the description of the video, I will provide a link to where you can download this latest NVIDIA Vulcan driver. It would be, um, so you go on the link and then you just go down until you see 532.34 and then you can download it for Windows 10 or 11. So who are these drivers for? They're mainly for uh, people that develop. Um, uh, you can use it on Windows, you can use it on Linux. I'm not 100% clued up on these drivers. I just know that yeah, it's, it does give you functionality for Linux and Windows. Um, but at that, let's get to the results. So guys, all my games are tested at medium settings, but I have included a whole bunch of newer games in my benchmark, so the newer games are quite a bit heavier. So let me just go through the list here without giving away my results. Dead Island 2, not heavy, play on medium settings. Uh, Dead Space Remake is quite a heavy game, so I play on the low settings preset. Ratchet and Clank is on the low settings preset. Remnant 2 is on the low settings preset. Returnal is on the low settings preset, but I use the balance slider or balance FSR 2 slider um, just to give some extra frames. Hogwarts Legacy on medium and then Resident Evil 4 Remake I just leave on my in-game settings which is a mixture of medium high and low but that doesn't matter because all I, I'm comparing these drives or drivers uh, apples to apples so uh, whatever settings uh, it doesn't really matter which settings I use just that um, I use the same settings in my benchmark so you can clearly see which driver is better that enough of that nonsense so where I could, I use FSR 2.0 or 2.1 with the quality setting. Obviously with Returnal, I use the balance slider. And then guys, you'll notice that all my games are single player. These are the games I enjoy. I don't enjoy multiplayer, but because I'm such a nice guy, I have downloaded Warzone 2. I just need to find an area where I can actually do run a benchmark. I am, am in the process of downloading Valorant as well. Um, I had a problem yesterday with um, uh, it needed to initialize uh, whatever that Riot Games thing so I had to reinstall it so I'm just busy reinstalling it at the moment and then I also will be including PUBG so there will be three online games in my future benchmarks um, and then lastly I test on a GTX 1650 laptop um, obviously RTX is a newer technology so um, the way it interfaces with the driver, so a driver that's good on a GTX card might not be good on an RTX card. So just be in mind that your results may vary. So let's get to the results. So I'm gonna start off with 536.40, the driver uh, gush for, I love it. I think it's a great driver, not an RTX though. So when I add up all my average FPSs over the 15 games, my total FPS over 15 games is 1,069. Divided by 15, it gives me average FPS of 71.27. And then I do the same thing for the 1% lows, add up all the 1% lows, and then over 15 games, 1% low total is 758. Divided by 15, so my average 1% low per game is 50.53. So then when I divide the 1% lows by the average FPS, it gives me a stability rating over these 15 games for this driver of 70.9%. This driver is battery smooth, especially on GTX platforms. Not so much for online, but for single player, this driver is the shit. And then 
uh, the driver in question today, 532.34. I did the same thing, added up all the average FPSs, and then my total FPS over 15 games was 1,056 divided by 15. So my average FPS per game is 70.4. So you can see the average FPS is a little bit lower. And then I did the same thing for the 1% lows. I started off very strongly with Resident Evil 4 Remake, so I thought, wow, this driver might be good. Not really the case. I added up all the average FP, uh, 1% lows, and then my total 1% low over 15 games was 737. So you can see it's already taking a knot of 21% low FPS. So, yeah, um, when I divide 737 by 15, my average 1% low for this driver is 49.13, quite a bit lower. It's like one and a half FPS on average low per game. So then when I divide the 1% lows by the average FPS, my stability for this driver over 15 games is 69.77%. So guys, unless you specifically need to make use of Vulcan drivers, I don't really recommend not even testing out this driver because um, the average FPS is lower, the average 1% lows are lower, so the driver is actually less stable. Not recommended. Um, I am going to be, in my next test, I'm going to do another uh, Extreme G test. I'm going to test the latest NVIDIA driver versus the Extreme G version 536.67. Um, yet again, don't really recommend the Extreme G drivers, but it is a request that comes up all the time. So yeah, be on the lookout for that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comment section. And those of you that haven't subscribed as of yet, if you're still watching, now is the time to do so. Enjoy the rest of your day. It's people like you. Cheers.